brand new machines were being brought in, I was like, wow, I gotta be over here. So they call this the yard side because it faces the yard and they call that side the bay side because it faces the bay. This building is crazy, man, it's huge. It's like first tier, second tier, third tier, fourth tier, fifth tier. Come on in, man. So this is my bed, this is my bunk area right here, right? Um, we made these cabinets, so that way we have a place to put our stuff. And then uh, CD shelves, and I made all these little cabinets right here, and then this is like just a regular locker. We cut the locker in half so I, I could have more space. My first time coming into a cell was going into county jail. I'd never been locked up before. I'd never been in any kind of trouble. Um, I was 18 years old and I was a senior in high school when I got arrested and so, uh, you know, it was pretty traumatic. I didn't kind of know what to, what to expect or what to deal with. Um, you know, I was claustrophobic, I was confined, you know, I was afraid and, you know, like the fear, you know, I didn't really know how to deal with that fear. You know, and then I realized that, you know, this was kind of going to be my circumstances for a significant amount of my life. And uh, I started getting used to it. And, you know, I don't like getting used to it. You know, it was extremely violent. There was a lot of stabbings, a lot of, you know, riots. Um, you know, that just kind of became my identity. It kind of became who I was and who I wanted to be because I, I really felt like this was all I was going to achieve. I never thought I would be anywhere else in life. Right before I committed my crime, man, I, was, I spent my birthday with her. And I committed my crime August 29, 1996. And so I went by and we we're hanging out and we we're talking. She's like, look, you need to, you need to stop. You need to, you know what I mean? What are you doing? I was like, ah, I know, I know, I know. And she's like, no, no, you don't know. You're not listening. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? Like, get your head right. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, ah, it's going to be good. It's going to be all right. I'll be all right. She's like, bro, you're headed to prison. And I was like, yeah, I know. But I was like, well, you know, they're not going to get me here for murder or anything. And so she walked in and sat down at the booth. And the first thing out of her mouth was like, you know, you're a liar. like man you know I think the philosophy becomes that you know what oh you're in prison you committed a crime well you know what good luck good riddance but we're human beings you know and that doesn't take away from what I did I mean look what I did to Eric what I can I can't I can never I can never change that you know I took from him the opportunity to live his life I took from his family the opportunity for them to experience the joy of their son and whatever it was that he was gonna do in his life you know, I work with kids and, you know, I tell them all the time, man, there's going to come a time in your life where you're going to have to make a choice and you're going to go the right way or you're going to go the wrong way. And the wrong way is going to lead you in a way that you can't change. You can't you can't change the harm that you've caused. And you're going to live with that choice and you're going to live with that decision. And you have to be conscious and you have to be thoughtful of it every time you walk out the door, every time you make a decision, think about it before you do it. I don't know if you really realize like what it is that you're offering people and what you're giving somebody. I mean, you got kids that are gonna go through your program right now that are, you're gonna change their life, man. Being where I've been and doing the things that I did and being locked down and getting 16 years in prison and like, you know, going through everything and walking into the world of manufacturing and just it clicking, I'm just like humble to just be doing it, you know what I mean? But at the same time, like, like this is real. You know what I mean? Like, this is real, you know? And it's, I think it's, it's 20 years, man. 20, 20 years.
When I first walked into this facility, there was machines just stacked everywhere and nothing in use. The vision that I had at that point is now becoming a reality. We took out all the old machines, all the old equipment is gone. Got rid of the welding room. We tore down the office. We put up new walls. We ran electrical, we ran air. We painted the walls. Painted the floor just where the CNC machines were going. The old is gone. The new, the fresh, the bright is here. This place is looking amazing. And now it's time to bring in our new CNC machines. All right, it's Christmas at San Quentin Prison. We're getting our CNC Haas machines. And Main Street is about to take shape fast. So we got multiple gates. We're gonna bring the trucks right through the main gate. They're gonna make sure there's no knives, nothing on it. Then we're gonna bring the second truck in, unload all the machines, unwrap them, right here at San Quentin Prison. I got Jerry bringing the machines in. So we're gonna start taking the CNC machines off the truck. We're gonna unload them. We're gonna unwrap them. Then we're gonna take each machine on a forklift and we're gonna drive it right through that gate. This shop, by the end of the day, is gonna look completely completely different. I worked on this one company, built it. I worked on this other company, you know, built it, put up walls, ran electrical, ran air. I step out to start my own company with zero money. I put out a loan for CNC machines for $300,000 and I get denied on my credit. A guy that worked on night shift always would look at me and I'd be running four machines and just doing things and I'd just be calm and he'd be like, man, you need to have your own company. Both his parents just died. They gave him $50,000. He comes and offers me the $50,000. I believe that it's my destiny to have my own shop, but I don't know why the doors aren't opening. I tell Jeff, I'm not gonna take your money. I'm not gonna take it. I, I try to get through every single door. Every single door fails. I go back to Jeff. You give me the 50,000, I'll triple it in two years and give it back. We go into business right, right when he does that. There's the biggest distributor of these big CNC machines. Flips through some pages and recognizes my name. Calls me up out of the blue and says, Titan, I've been hearing a lot of amazing things about you. What's your plan? I give him my plan and said, I'm going to personally co-sign your loan. Tell me where to deliver the machines. I start my company. So just as close as you can where it's still secure. Okay, do you want to line the fronts up? Or? Yes, yes. Fronts completely lined up all the way. All right. That works. What's up, bro? How you doing? Okay, we're ready for the first one in. The new things that are coming in, you can see it having an effect on all the men that are in the class. Even the men that aren't in the class that are coming over and looking in and uh, they're going, whoa. This is really happening. I remember the old machine shop and felt really cluttered. Now it feels like an open environment and everything is new. I was really, really amazed by how big the machines were and how many we got. So it's 
different as the tools are up on this. It's like a Ferrari compared to the other one being like a Honda. The shop had been repainted like this bright white. The floor was done. These brand new machines were being brought in. And the new shop is amazing. Studying it. I, I, I'm still struggling on the map a little bit. Yeah. But I've been having somebody help me. And, uh, I was like, wow, like, I got to be over here. The systems that these things have, I just can't wait to turn on. When I vice up my first piece and I install my first program and that end mill starts spinning and the coolant's flying and the chips are flying, that's, that's when I'll be like, we're here. This is, <laughs> this is unbelievable. I mean, it's unbelievable and yet it's happening. That everything that's coming in that's new is making us feel new. You'll have four feet. It You're gonna have four feet right here, yeah. and then the other one goes here. Yeah. Yeah, and it can overhang. It's fine. Right. Yeah, but it won't be on the uh, the seam. If you're gonna make this one three then make that one three also. We're taking measurements so we know where to put the last machine so we can adjust these two and have the right gap so they're perfect. How's that line? Boom, 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 boom. We build the shop I meet this huge company down here where a lot of companies were taking advantage of them and they had all this titanium work. And they come up and talk to me. I didn't even know who they were. They come up and talk to me and they're like, hey, can you make these crazy parts? I'm like, yeah. Then I Googled how to machine <laughs> titanium. I made the part. And it was so perfect that the owner of the company, after checking it thoroughly, said it was the best piece that he had ever gotten. And he walked me over to their buyer and said, give this guy as much work as he can handle. All of a sudden, I got 55 employees. I got 20 machines. We got to a point where we're making like a million dollars a month. I had ruined so many lives and I had done so much and yet now I have 55 families that have food on their tables because of me. I was so confident. I built such an amazing company. Amazing things are going to happen. Like I'm going to do amazing things and I had so many dreams and aspirations. I get a call from my customer, it's 2000 and it's right at the end of 2000 and I get a call from my customer and he's like, Titan, this is gonna be a bad day. This one, it's a little that way, right? Did you see it? Perfect. Done. You know, the machine shop was full of relics, and now it's full of brand new shiny toys. <laughs> tells me this is gonna be a bad day. I'm like, how bad? He's like, we're putting everything on hold. And it all came crashing down. I spent the next year, I kept my guys working. I was like, I'm gonna sell the parts, I'm gonna do it, it's gonna be good. And like, I'm just gonna keep them going. I had money in the bank and I kept the payroll of like 90,000 every two weeks. Boom, 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 boom. 
And then they all got canceled. Over the next year, I would lay off 40 employees. I'm like, I got $500,000 negative in my bank account, but I'm selling the company and I got machines that are worth money. Like, we're gonna like, we're just gonna escape this thing right now. I'm just like, I'm gonna sell the company to this awesome aerospace company. The end of the year comes and all of a sudden, boom. The company says, you know what, Titan, we've changed our minds. We're not gonna buy your company. And I got all these machines and they're sitting, there's no work. They're sitting for two months, sitting. $200,000 machines, sitting. I was alone in my shop. I walked out to my floor and I got on my knees and take it all, Lord, like, just take it all. Take everything from me. I got nothing else. I got nothing else. I thought outside the box, I'd done this, I'd done this, I'd done this, I'd done this, and it all failed. And there's like, you know, there's nothing I can do. I get a call early in the morning. And the guy's like, hey, this is so-and-so from Malibu Boats. Do you have those machines? We looked on your facilities list. It looks like you have an EC400, you have this, this, this. I'm like, yeah, exactly, I do. They're like, our machines just broke. We have pallets of material, we have programs. We'll send our head guy up to your shop to put it in. Can we rent your machines? And I was like, yes. <laughs> My crew built the partition wall. We're gonna put some simulators on it, so we all got together, figure out what's gonna support that type of weight. And it actually was one of the machine shop guys that come up with the Unistrut system that we had. Per Titan's instructions, we wanted the simulators to simulate walking up to a VF2 SS. So I measured it 70 inches, drill into this wall, run a couple struts, find some L brackets that mount in here, Get this all measured out. We figured two of them would hold about 50 pounds worth of simulator. Get those mounted up, and uh, this is gonna be our simulator station all the way down. Put it on. You guys ready? I got it, man. Come on. Move it around. Get it to slide right in. Got it? Everybody's watching us? You guys supposed to be just doing it. Make it happen. The cool thing about the simulator is you can, like, test everything right here, make sure everything works, and it'll tell you like do you have a problem you know what i mean so you can run through check everything out and then whatever one that you guys have put up go back and make sure make sure that this gap is exactly the same this is uh cnc machining precision everything has to be perfect did you double check that this was 70 inches exactly all the way down it's supposed to be 70 here 70 right here Where's the tape measure? It might be like 69. Why would you say 69 and no? Why would you know that it was 69 and a quarter? I'll split the difference. The uh, lays are a lot lower. Oh, 69 and a half. We need perfection. I want them designing, I want them programming creating code, simulating the code in the computer, then taking the code, putting it into the Haas simulator, simulating it again, making sure everything's perfect. Then we take the program, pop it out, drop it in the CNC machine, then we're ready to do it. 
They were within a quarter inch. They look good. All I know is the first one is perfect. <laughs> short-term goals, my long-term goals, and uh... Today I had a great lesson from Titan. I wanted to make a square, and he showed me how to do it. The studying's paid off. That's not really surprising. What's surprising was a lot of the things that he was talking about, I understood. In the beginning, I had no idea. I was confused, and I wanted to run away really fast, the opposite direction. The thing is, when you think about this, so you have the end mill, right? Yeah. So the end mill just offsets, right? I mean, what is it when you, you know you have hope, but you can actually see yourself going, hey, I can do this. So the lights were coming on, and he was patient. It was good, man, and I, that's, that's what I need, you know? I need that patience and that, that encouraging touch, that encouraging, you know, that you can do this, don't give up. So what I'm doing right now is acclimating myself to the, to the board and, and, and learning where all the, the control buttons are, the modes, the displays, the function keys and uh, that's really helping me out a lot. I spend a lot of time late nights studying, you know, when it's quiet in, in North Block, and uh, I just read, I study, and I draw. So Luke has been going through the book at night in his cell, and he's actually drawing, look at these amazing pictures, and he's just talking all about it. You know, what's a bull nose? What's a ball end mill? What's a flat end mill? So when I come in and say, we're gonna run a shell mill, and then we're gonna run an end mill, and then we're gonna run a 90 degree chamfer tool, he's gonna to be like, oh, I know what that is. Check, out, check it out though. Four flutes. Look at this picture right there. Yeah. Amazing. If this man's gonna come in here and, and, and put his work system, his work ethics in here and teach me all this, I mean, just because I'm in prison doesn't mean I'm not smart, and I have to be around that. You know, I have to be around that to be successful. So uh, I keep saying I feel good, but I don't know what else to say. I don't know how else to describe it. It's, it's. I feel like I'm worth something. I feel like I'm seeing my worth. I felt great about it, especially when I saw it. And I'm thinking, if, if if I can do it one time, I can do it again. I mean, happy dance, whatever that is. <laughs> Whatever that is, man, I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, it feels good. It feels really good. Through my whole thing, I'd learned about 50,000 companies closing. I'd learned about manufacturing. I'd learned and talked and met so many people trying to save my company. And I saw that there was this huge problem. And I also understood that all these shops are running here the phone rings, this guy's like, hey, this is Chad from the Discovery Channel. And I'm like, oh, you, you called to talk to the guy who went from homelessness to prison to building a great American job shop? He's like, no, man, I just need a part. <laughs> In that instance, my head clicked, God, gave me this crazy talent, not to make money, but to make a difference. I walked right into my destiny of what I was supposed to do in life. I started in prison and God took me on this crazy journey and took me back into prison. Get a park in the warden spot. <laughs> How does that happen? Yeah, it's uh, 12 foot one and a quarter. Okay, we're ready then. You put that anchor in that one top corner and that's where your starting point.
You're on the outside and, and guys are like stepping on that flag. They're burning that flag. You know what I mean? You come in here to a prison where men are incarcerated and they're making that border perfect. They're measuring that flag perfect. And they're taking more pride in that flag than what I see when you turn on TV. This country was built on manufacturing. We need to teach our youth, we need to teach our workers, we need to lift up the entire industry, but we also need to teach the prisons and the inner cities and, and everyone about manufacturing. Hey, Butch, make sure you get a good stretch on it, huh? You bring jobs back, crime goes down, and many problems in our society, everything has a way of getting better. When your people are successful, they're happy, and they have hope. That's what manufacturing does. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> right on, man. On the next Built Behind Bars. If we wanted a little drama, we got it. Here he brings in these two huge behemoths. I'm just hoping we can get it into the big shop. My curriculum is gonna teach these guys how to design their own parts on day one. We're gonna be getting a new set of skills to use when we get out. I will be employable for the rest of my life. One decision in a matter of seconds can end everything. We're gonna change how everyone looks at advanced manufacturing education.